Welcome to a quest for metal. Today we're going to be ranking the mighty Thrash Legends Exodus. You guys voted for it, and I'm here to deliver. Now, Exodus isn't a band I've been into for a very long time. Um, in fact, I'd say they're probably one of the Thrash bands I actually fucking hated. Um, I did a video ages ago about popular bands I can't get into. Exodus was on it. Because people kept picking what they thought is the best Exodus album. Um, and I just couldn't gel with it. Um, so this list may be some, some, some pretty spicy takes. Some pretty controversial takes. Um, because I didn't grow up with them. You know, I didn't grow up with them in the fucking 90s or whatever. I enjoyed Metallica, Crater, Sodom, all these bands way more. Destroyer 666, Vector, all these bands. Exodus, found it really fucking hard to get into. But... Because I was forced to fucking rank them, listen to all their albums, and, you know, now I actually really enjoy the band. I think the band's actually fantastic now. There's a couple of albums I'm still not a big fan of, but with all discographies, there's going to be a couple that are going to be, you know, stinkers. Uh, I wouldn't say any here are... Oh, well, there's one which is complete trash. The rest, you know, fairly enjoyable. I just found it hard to actually get into. But once I got into them, now I quite like them. So you know how these rankings go. Pop your own list down below in the comments. Um, how did you get into Exodus as well? Are you a long-time fan? Are you a new fan like me? I'm a new fan by, like, what, a fucking couple of weeks? So if anything on this list is wrong, you can stick this finger up your fucking ass. So let's get started with my least favourite album. So Force of Habit is my least favourite album. Um, it's the worst fucking art. I didn't even know what's going on. It's kind of like Picasso. Uh, I never liked Picasso, it's just a bunch of fucking shapes. Looks like something a fucking mental patient would draw. Album art aside, the music is fucking terrible as well. This is the album with the worst production on. It's so fuzzy, everything has this layer of fuzz on, which brings the whole album down. His vocals are so bad on this album as well, for some reason. He sounds like he's singing into a pillow the entire time. Like, I don't want to hear that on an Exodus album. I want to hear his cool, crazy vocals. But on this one, you can't really fucking hear it. Everything's muffled. It's disjointed and it's way too fucking long. Why is it so goddamn long? Yeah, no, don't like this album at all. This one's shit. If you like this one, cool. Maybe I'll enjoy it on multiple listens, but I'd never want to listen to it again, to be honest. So, yeah. F fuck off. Next up is Impact is Imminent. And this is the one people usually put last. Um, I don't understand why. I actually kind of like this one. So there's only one that I actually think is pure trash, which is Force of Habit. This one's pretty fucking good. I actually quite enjoyed this one. Um, sure, it's one of the most bland Exodus albums. It's a bit, it's a bit bland, but there's nothing wrong with it, if you know what I mean. The production's way beefier. It sounds way better than Force of Habit. Like, miles better. The title track is fucking fun as hell. The song Objective Overruled might be my favourite on the album. That is such a sick song. And the riffs here, you know, pretty infectious. So i got to give some credit to Impact is the Imminent. People slam it. I actually quite enjoyed it. Not as much as the others, obviously, but enough to put it higher than my last place. So Impact is Imminent. Uh, I think people should go re-listen to it because I think it's pretty good. Pleasures of the Flesh is next. An earlier album by Exodus, which some people high, hold in high regard. Um, I do enjoy it as well. I enjoy this album. It starts off a bit fucking weird, them talking about a baked potato. Um, yeah, I'm not too sure what's going on there. I know the whole, I know the theme's like cannibal kind of theme, but it just feels a bit weird to me. Deranged? Yeah, he sounds fucking deranged on here. There's a lot of mid-paced songs on here, a lot of slower songs. Brain Dead, title track, some cool numbers on the album. Um, Cool tribal kind of sounding ones as well. Overall, it's a pretty fine album. Nothing too special, nothing too, you know, nothing too shit, nothing too special. So it's just kind of, eh, it's pretty good. So it's coming here. Uh-oh, Persona Non Grata is here. The latest one by Exodus. Holy shit. I don't know, this is going to get some fucking dislikes. I didn't like the singles when they came out. When the singles came out, I wasn't a fan of Exodus. Um... And I still don't really like the singles. I think his voice, mainly because of his voice, Steve's voice, it sounds really bad on this album for some reason. It just sounds... His annoying factor has just elevated on this album. 
Because the main reason I couldn't get into Exodus is the fucking vocals. I thought they were so whiny. Um, and this one, oh my god, those singles. Awful. Fucking awful. But the rest of the album's pretty fucking killer, to be honest. The rest of the album's pretty killer. So it's only those two, those two songs that I was kind of iffy on. The rest of the album's actually really fucking good. Starting off with the fucking, like, seven minute or whatever long song. Kicks you right into gear. Great way to start off an album. I can't put this higher than some of the others, mainly because I think it's quite inconsistent. The There is some great songs, and then there is some songs that I don't care for, like the two singles. So it is going to go like middle of the pack, I'm afraid. The album art, though, one of the best they've done. Holy shit, that album art is fan-fucking-tastic. Shame that music is fairly inconsistent, but when it hits, it hits fucking hard. I enjoyed it. It was a good time. Um, I'm sure... For long-term fans, it was it was great, but I just preferred over albums. So yeah, let's move on. Da 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 da. -da. Bonded by blood, boned by blood, the classic. This is the album which people always said to check out. This is the album that people say this is Exodus's classic album. You have to check this out, or else you don't like Exodus. I checked it out. I didn't really like it. This is the album I couldn't get into. People kept showing me this, and I was like, this isn't very good. This isn't very fucking good. On re-listens and re-listens and re-listens, and then skip forward a few years to now, re-listening to it, I've kind of enjoyed it now. I kind of enjoyed it. I still don't like the vocals. I don't think Paul Bailoff is as good as Steve. Controversial opinion, though. Or as Rob, because Rob's fucking in another league of his own. I fucking love his vocals, and his era of the band is my favourite. Spoiler alert. But... Yeah, um, Paul's vocals are just kind of okay to me, but it's not the vocals. The songs here fucking kick ass. Holy shit. The song Bonded by Blood. Yeah, that's a fucking thrash staple. Strike of the Beast. Lesson in Violence. Oh my god, there's so many good songs on this album. I've actually grown to really enjoy this album now. Still don't think the singing is, is as good. I still don't think it's anywhere near as good as fucking, like, New Order by Testament or... Rain in Blood by Slayer or fucking any of the other classic thrash metal bands, um, classic albums. But I, I still I still fucking really enjoy it now. And I'm glad I do because I don't like hating stuff. You know, contrary to popular belief, I actually like liking things. So I'm glad I like Exodus now and I'm glad I like this album. Don't love it, but I like it. So it's going you know, fairly high, fairly high on the list. Fabulous Disaster is next. That's right. Another classic. This one, um, I could easily put one, to be honest. The songs on here, when they hit, they fucking hit. And they're some of the best. I mean, Toxic Waltz, Kick Your Friend in the Head. Come on, that's a fucking thrash metal staple as well. Last Act of Defiance, such a great song. The first couple of songs in this album kick you in the balls and don't stop kicking until your balls are mush. Oh boy, the fucking mush. There is some fucking strange songs on here which I don't fucking like though. Like the the Lowrider cover is just awful. It's one of the worst Exodus songs I've heard, and it's on this fucking album. It kind of ruins the flow. I don't like when bands do cover songs, and this is one of the worst I've ever fucking heard. Take that out. The album itself, it's fun. Cajun Hell is probably my favorite on the album. That's such a cool, unique song. This album's fantastic. This album's better than Bonded by Blood. If this, if someone recommended this rather than Bonded by Blood, maybe I got into Exodus years and years before. But alas, I fucking didn't. So it's, yeah, it, it is what it is. But this album is amazing, massive step up, and I really love it. Shovel-headed kill machine now. The first album with Rob Duke on vocals. I love his vocals. He's the best vocalist out of the three, in my opinion. This album's aggressive as hell. This is more like a death metal album. Holy shit, the aggression on here. The problem with this, I know this is Bryce's favourite um, Exodus album. Uh, spoiling his list. It's not mine. I think it's the worst Rob Duke album. That's not saying much, though, because they're all fucking good. But I do think it's kind of one note the entire way through. It's aggressive. It's fast. That's it. It's not... Quite as progressive as the um, the two we'll get to. Um, so yeah, I don't have anything bad to say about it other than it's just consistent all the way through. It's consistently fast and aggressive and great all the way through. So nothing bad to say, but nothing 
stands out, if you know what I mean. I mean, Def Amphetamine and Altered Boy, two fun tracks. Um, yeah, it's, it's a fun, good album. Nothing much to say about this one, to be honest. It's just good. So, yeah, let's move on. Blood in! Blood out! Holy shit, blood in, blood out. The return of Steve and people are already slamming their faces into the fucking keyboard like little monkeys. This is higher than Bonded by Blood. Pleasures of the Flesh and all these fucking albums. Don't get your knickers in a twist. This is my... I love this one. This one's fucking fantastic. The production's way better than both of those. I prefer his singing. Steve's back in the band and better than ever. People said this one's boring. Uh, no, this one's fucking amazing. The drumming is fucking insane on here. The drumming on Back 13 is just mind-melting. Body Harvest, such a catchy fucking song. This, from here on out, I'll re-listen to these albums over and over again. Those are all ones that I thought was pretty good. Um, these are the albums that made me a fan. You know, these are the albums that made me a fan. Um, fucking Body Harvest, I goddamn love that song. This album kicks, kicks me in the face, and I love it. I fucking love it. Um, I want to re listen to it right now. I could easily put this number one, to be honest. Um, I have no... I have no qualms against Steve's vocals when it's, you know, done well. And it's done well on this album and on another one we'll get to. Which, of course, is Temple of the Damned, which is next. Easily my favourite of the Steve era albums. I think this is a flawless album. This is my number three. Um, I knew from the album art this was going to be good. A little, like a little goblin from Gringotts Bank on the fucking piano. Come on, it's got to be good. Production so much better than Force of Habit. Um, Star Stangle, Scar Stangle Bag, I can't say it. You know the one I'm trying to say. Majestic song. Backlist has such a great chorus. Calling the Herd is amazing. This has just banger after banger after banger. It's an underrated album. It's one of the best, and I think it is the best, of Steve Zetra on vocals. Ah, uh, I love it. Can I put it, I could easily put it number one, but let's get to them. So number two, we're gonna go with the Atrocity Exhibition. A. Yeah, we're gonna go with the first one for number two. Um, I know this one is um, Pair of Jeans' favourite, and I almost had it favourite. I almost had it favourite. This is so close to being my favourite as well. Um, I love the progressive nature on both of these albums. I love the longer songs. The, they're just more intricate, the more interesting. Rob's vocals just lends itself too well to Exodus's music, and I think he should still be in the band, to be honest. Although Blood In, Blood Out was fantastic, so yeah, we'll, we'll see. It is what it is. I love this album. Funeral Hymn, the title track as well. Two amazing songs on here. The melodies held within this album, super strong, super memorable. Uh, the art's probably one of my favourites as well, so... So close to being number one. But at the moment it's number two because Exhibit B is number one. I mean, starting off... That acoustic intro, the ballad of Leonard and Charles. <sighs> Amazing, a great way to start off the album. Keeps up the fast pace, the solo is so goddamn good. Rob has this kind of Phil Anselmo-esque voice, this kind of gruffness to his voice, which is just, it's just amazing. Beyond the Pale, fantastic song. Downfall as well. I'm pretty sure I heard Downfall, I don't know where it was. Maybe it was on um, Brutal Legend. But it was, it was somewhere, but I heard that before I even knew Exodus. So when that song came on, I was like, I've definitely heard that before somewhere. Loved it. Love all the songs on this one, just like part A. It's just, it's just preference, but there's more songs on B that stood out a little bit more. So yeah, th that is my favourite Exodus album. So yeah, that's my favourite Exodus album. Let me know down below what's your favourite Exodus albums of all time. Do you agree with my list? You probably don't, but let me know down below what you would put as your favourite Exodus album. Remember, there's no right or wrong answers, it's just your own opinion. So let me know down below and we'll see you again on another Quest for Metal.